Welcome to Sermon Brainwave with me, Caroline Lewis. And me, Matt Skinner. And me, Joy J. Moore. So the texts for the Name of Jesus Festival Sunday, which falls on January 1, 2023, I will say those in a minute. If you are looking for the podcast for the first Sunday of Christmas, which occurs on the same date, there is a podcast for that as well. Uh, but this is a podcast on the Name of Jesus Festival Day, which uh, has doesn't happen very often. And so here we go. Our texts are Numbers, chapter 6, verses 22 through 27, Psalm 8, Galatians 4, 4 through 7, and then Luke 2, 15 through 21. We have thought about Luke 15 through 20 several times, often, <laughs> A lot in the last uh, last couple of last week, uh, that is, for Christmas. Uh, but then in verse 21, after eight days had passed, it was time to circumcise the child, and he was called Jesus, the name given by the angel before he was conceived in the womb. And so the church sets aside this day uh, to for this moment, this one verse in Luke of of Mary and Joseph following uh, not only the law of uh, the covenant with God of circumcising their son on the eighth day, but also uh, also following uh, obeying the angel uh, and saying this is this is what the child's name will be. And so uh, it's 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 a glimpse into this kind of following through. Uh, of and uh, obedience of a life with God, uh, that this is this is what life with God is. It's that it's that commitment to that covenant and that relationship. Mm -hmm. And so it's it's first and foremost that that following through that, and where does that following through take them? Uh, and and where will it lead? And uh, but yet that's that's you know, and that's what they do. So yeah. Yeah, you know, if the Christian year is an attempt to like print the Christian story onto the calendar, then well, here you go. Every January first, uh, we'll celebrate this. But you're right; it is that one verse. Luke is the only gospel that mentions the circumcision of Jesus, mentions the circumcision of John as well. But that's that's part of it. And like you said too, Caroline, this is the name that was given to Mary, which is also significant. That you would wonder perhaps about naming um, responsibilities in that culture. And Mary's probably saying something like, by the way, Joseph, we're going to name him Jesus. <laughs> and wondering if Joseph, <laughs> Joseph has enough, enough to get his head around yeah. uh, in this yeah. circumstance. But that there's a, it's, it's, there's a, I think there's a sense of Mary's own kind of authority as the one to whom God or the angel appeared that also is maybe lurking in the background of, of this story mm -hmm. as well. But it poses this vitally important question. I don't know if it's necessarily a Christmas question, but it's a an important question, which is what difference does it make that Jesus was Jewish and how important is it for Christians to continually hold that in front of us? But also what difference does it make that his family, according to Luke, at least, was observant. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, after this, they'll go through the purification ritual right. in, later on in Luke chapter 2. Um, yeah, and they go every year to Jerusalem for festivals. They, mm -hmm. they appear to be a quote-unquote good Jewish family. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But that matters. I, and I know it matters for Luke and for Acts. And it matters, I think, for the way we as Christians understand who he was, who he is. Yeah, and uh, that's so. That is so important, and and not only a good Jewish family, observant Jews that uh, that are that are moving through those uh, covenantal expectations. Uh, that's part of it, but also that going, you know, going. We're going to leave Luke behind now uh, for three years, and so to. Put this story in the context of Luke 1 and 2, of the Annunciation to Mary, the visitation of Mary and Elizabeth, and kind of maybe bring all of that forward to here, and that that Mary is Mary is carrying on uh, that 
those words to her from Gabriel about about the name and that, but not only just observation, but the way in which she has already interpreted what all of this means, what God has done for her. And so, of course, she's going to, you know, to what extent this is a moment of honoring God as well, uh, that observation, that observation. Uh, that observation of the law is not just observation of the law. It's uh, for the, for that, for obedience sake, it's for, uh, it's for honoring God and, and what God has, God has done for her. God has favored her that she talks about in the Magnificat, Magnificat. And so, so put it in that context, but also recognizing that Mary has all, Mary is as a, as a Jewish woman is also absolutely spot on in terms of recognizing and committing herself to these ongoing reflections and interpretations of God's activity in her life. And, uh, and, and you get a hint of that here and he was called Jesus. It's a passive voice. Uh, and so you realize just how present God is in all of this. This is so we're reminded of the kind of intertwining of God and 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 Mary and Elizabeth and the angel and you know it just is it's a beautiful verse in that regard of the way in which uh, the way in which the entirety of their lives are caught up in and about uh, the praising and honoring of God in their lives and what they do and um, which is beautiful. So a couple of weeks ago, I mentioned uh, the priestly function of the preacher. Uh, and uh, on this festival day um, that um, we're, we're now talking about, we have a record of an ancient religious practice, the, um, the practices of uh, faithful Jews. Um, and it not only connects to the cosmic promise of God, but it also connects to the community of Israel, uh, descendants of Abraham and Sarah. And this is the community that Jesus repeatedly will restore people to as he encounters them throughout his life and ministry. So uh, this is uh, something we don't want to lose in the hustle and bustle of uh, what is the very reason for this season. Uh, it's a festival for practicing the promise of God made known in Jesus by telling and trusting the story. So let the naming occur in trusting this story. Jesus is the embodiment of the promise of God. And we've talked about this before, but God, God's name, Jesus name, holiness, grace, mercy, righteousness, justice compassion, faithfulness, divinity, heir, savior, image of God, son of God, Lord. All of that is such a huge uh, identification. And it's caught up in the festivals, it's caught up in the circumcision, and it's caught up in the name. And we don't, we don't, we don't give as much attention to that. Um, as, as cultures and, and generations before us has, but I don't want us to lose that in rehearsing this story. And, yeah. and so I really yeah. appreciate both of your introductions to this particular day, because um, I think we need to recover that. Yeah, you could title the sermon, What's in a Name? And then <laughs> just, and, uh, and bring, like you said, Joy, all of the, all of the names that have been that that we've been claiming these that you know it uh, for christmas eve and in our text wonderful counselor mighty god everlasting father that are all combined in this name jesus and so what's in a name is is just profound as you said just this these profound promises and grace of god that get you know that that jesus has a lot of nicknames <laughs> Uh, but, but that name Jesus is brings all of that to bear here as, you know, the one Yahweh saves. Yes. And that's the way the other three texts are going to take us. They're going to 
ask us to consider what does it mean to bear the name of God and what does it mean to yeah. bear the name of Jesus, which of course is not language that we use often in, at least in American culture, outside of the church, inside the church all the time, praying in the name of Jesus, doing all this in the name of Jesus. And so that's, a, I think, an important way to, if, if that's where the preacher wants to go, a good way to use this Sunday is to talk about what does that mean in terms of identifying with Jesus? What does that mean in terms of our own kind of alliance or solidarity? What does that mean in terms of the power available to us or the authority available to us? There's a lot of talk about uh, power in, in at least in America these days and, and the church's uh, access to it and, and responsible or non-responsible use thereof. So that could be really interesting too, which takes us maybe away a bit from the, the Jesus as a faithful Jew question, but talks about this idea of, again, of what does it mean to name God? Also, what does it mean to be named by God? Mm -hmm. Are incredibly important way, are, are incredibly important questions, I think, for navigating your way through the Bible. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So should we go from there then to Numbers? So Numbers is set in uh, the context of what it means to be a Nazarite. Uh, and um, so we, we know this text, the Lord bless you, uh, but it comes after a, a, a naming that is pretty much being set aside, um, uh, not expected of everyone. Um, but if you take this vow, there's some pretty clear restrictions. There's some pretty high expectations there's 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 um there there are lines drawn for you to live out that identity um and then you find out that you have this ability to bless in the name of god and i i really appreciated putting it back in that context um uh, for me this year, uh, because I'm so, I, I drop that verse all the time because it's so powerful. Um, but how do we get this opportunity to bless in the name of God? Um, and if I dare make a theological link, it's because Jesus has shown us what it looks like in human flesh to bear the name of God in, in our very lives. It's, um, well, where would we go with that? I mean, the, the idea of to bless, there's another word that has so much churchy <laughs> traction, but we often don't know what it means or we confuse it with prosperity mm -hmm. or health. Yeah. So, so the words that are here, um, uh, in verse 25, the creator of the universe looks upon you and is gracious to you. Um, that, you know, when you, when you think of the awesomeness of the creator of the universe making eye contact with you, not to judge you, but to bless you too. I'm trying to, mm -hmm. are you, you're challenging me not to say bless, but to be merciful to you, to be uh, gracious to you. Um, to bring you peace. Um, that's what Jesus did throughout Jesus's life. Wherever Jesus went, yes, um, folks were judged, but they were judged because folks were blessed. The hungry were fed. And so those who kept things to themselves were judged. The thirsty were filled. So those who were holding back were judged. Um, the little ones were invited to come. So those who put out gates and borders, uh, boundaries, um, were, were, were judged. And, and that's what we get a chance to do is when we say these words, are they words that we say? Or is this the life that we're living? Are we the ones who have taken the vow so that we can be the very embodiment of the grace and mercy of God? Well, I think too, bless, blessing can be translated or, or blessing. One definition of ble to bless is to, uh, to know divine favor. And, and when we think of it, not favor as in 
um, like crossing texts and, <laughs> and and testaments and all kinds of things. But when we look at the way in which favor, we've been talking about favor and and with regard to Mary, God, God favoring her. It's not that he picked her up and said, you're my favorite. <laughs> it's a, it's regarding, it's looking, it's seeing. And so that blessing is that, yeah, right? It's eye contact, as you said, that it's blessing is God seeing you uh, and entering into your time and space and place, um, however God needs to, or however God God will see fit to, or uh, w- what God is responding to. And so these words, you know, that, that we end services with the Lord bless you and keep you. Uh, it's, it's that might, might you experience throughout the rest of this week, that, that favor, that presence, that being seen in all, of, all areas of your life. Uh, and as you go about your life, uh, so that blessing again is not, I know what you mean, Matt, it's not about it's not about uh, wealth and uh, and abundant possessions as it's gotten turned around, you know, as being. But and maybe you know maybe the sermon can recapture that concept of blessing and uh, and recast it in that in a divine theological way. And and I I dare want to underscore that to say, not just being seen, but in response to say that we become the embodiment of that grace to others. Mm-hmm. Um, Mary found was was you know found favor, but she said yes. You know, she she responded by saying, you know, whatever it is you want to do, I'm 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 on board with it. Mm-hmm. And 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 so for us not just to be gracious that we are seen by God. Um, and I, I, I'm hearing uh, sermons about Hagar, um, uh, but but not just that we are seeing, but that this God is loving the world through us. Um, you know, so we we tell the story of Isaac, not of Ishmael, and yet God sees Hagar, uh, and so the same thing is true for us: is that in see, in being seen. How do we say yes and and become the very blessing in our very own lives? That was my mother's motto, life motto, blessed to be a blessing. That was, yes. It's on her tombstone and or her gravesite or whatever. Yep. That was Yeah. So how how excellent then this psalm, which gives us the full context of the image of God, mm-hmm. uh, where we ask the question. Um, um, what are human beings that God is mindful of us, mortals that God cares for us? We are the icons of God. Uh, as uh, Ralph says in, in the commentary, this is our vocation. <laughs> um, and, and for me, reading that behind numbers, is, it, it is, uh, that, that, that explains why I took that interpretation of, of, of numbers, so of the blessed to be a blessing because this is our vocation. Um, God is mindful of us because God has created us to be the image of God in the spheres of influence where, that we have. Well, in the Galatians. Galatians text as well, right? This idea of bearing the name of Christ makes you also a, a co-heir and an, an adoptee along with Christ. And so it's interesting how with this array of texts, we you, know, you start with the idea of it's the eighth day of Christmas. Jesus takes this name, but then what does the name mean? And then, but how does this name also function throughout the cosmos? How does this name function in terms of our interactions with each other? And then Galatians four, you have how does how do each how does each one of us benefit from this bearing of the name, even though there's no real focus on name here it's in, it's embedded in this idea of adoption mm-hmm. and the idea of being able to call god then our our abba mm-hmm. i was reading through um lisa bowen's uh african-american readings of paul and uh, she talks about uh that um 
a lot of the Pauline language um, phrases uh, words like God's workmanship and chosen vessel. And um, in, in, in some ways, that's, the, that's what it means to be created in, in the image of God. And, and I was struck by uh, her pointing out to the readings uh, of those who read and received this word as a word of promise, that, this, that they are heirs of Christ. And, and so we are. We can, we can receive that word too.